Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Welcome, my friend. Welcome to the middle of the week. I appreciate so much you making Bible track echoes a part of your day today. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, if at all possible, turn in your own copy of God's Word to that place and join us. 2 Peter chapter 1. And if you can, have pen and paper ready for jotting down some notes, some outlines, and as we walk through here, I really do struggle strive to make the Bible passage before us very clear and very usable. And I think you taking some notes will aid you in putting our teaching into action and maybe even share it with somebody else. But having that pen and paper handy will enable you to have ready to jot down our contact information because I have a free gift I want to give to you. That's a free gift of a sample packet of our gospel tracks, but I'll say more about that here in just a moment. Recently, I got to watch about a half hour of an hour program about the life of that baseball great, Ted Williams. Now, I learned a lot about the man. I learned that when he was in the batter's box waiting for the next pitch to come, he could show great control waiting for just the right pitch. But in his family life, he lacked control and anger controlled him. The sad truth is anger controls a lot of people who really are genuinely born again. But that topic is for another day. Now, Ted Williams was inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame. And how could it not? He, Ted Williams, was either the very best or the second best hitter that baseball has ever seen. The day Ted Williams entered the Hall of Fame, brother, there was great fanfare. There was a great celebration. Why? Because one of the greatest players of all time was entering this special, hallowed place, the Hall of Fame. One day, my friend, every child of God is going to enter the Hall of Heaven. Our passage today causes us to ask ourselves this question. What kind of celebration will there be in heaven the day I enter, or will there be any celebration at all? That's the confrontation we have before us today. Get your Bible, get something to jot with, jot some notes on. Let's study God's Word together. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago, and that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. I'm referring to a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It's in a format that's small enough you can put it in your shirt pocket, keep it in your purse, having it handy to give out to people with whom you probably cannot verbally tell the gospel because time and situation won't allow you, but you can put the gospel into their hand. And we even have tracks to use when you are walking through verbalizing the gospel with somebody. But the track on my hand right now is entitled, Have You Found Rest? Have you found rest? Now, beloved, there's only one gospel message, but each of our tracks comes at that one gospel message from a different vantage point. This one deals with rest, the rest of the soul. It's based upon Jesus's famous saying in the gospel of Matthew chapter 11, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It talks about a story about a person who was a Sunday school superintendent, active in a church, but he had no rest because he didn't have Christ. Spiritually active, yes, but spiritually lost, absolutely. But he found rest as he found out that he can receive Christ as his Savior, as a gift. Oh, friend, here's a great tool. Have you found rest? At the end of the program, my announcer is going to come back on. He's going to give you three ways by which you can contact us, giving us your name and your mailing address. Please do that today. 
One of the ways is by going to our website. And just in case you can't wait till the end of the program, jot down the website right now. It is www.bibletracksinc.org, bibletracksinc.org. Get the tracks from us today. Let's you and I become a partner in the gospel work that Christ has called us to. If your Bible is open to 2 Peter chapter 1, look at verses 10 and 11. They say this, Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I began dealing with these verses on the Monday broadcast, and my outline title for verses 10 and 11 is the word entering, entering or entering this new kingdom. If you ever go to visit our website, you can go there and you can watch three short videos about gospel tracts. Now, one of those videos is about a man that God used to lead 140,000 souls to Christ using gospel tracts. This guy was not a preacher. He's not a radio speaker. He was just a regular Joe common believer who cared about where people would spend eternity. Eternity. But I wonder, I wonder, the day that that man went to heaven, I wonder what kind of celebration he received. I'm thinking it was a pretty significant celebration. Well, on Monday's broadcast, I emphasized the word contrast based upon the opening words of verses, verse 10 there. You can go back and listen to that program there on our website. All the broadcasts, past broadcasts are there. But the word I want you to ponder right now is not the word contrast, but it's the word classification. Classification. In verse 10, we are challenged to give diligence or to give all that we have to make every effort that we can make sure about two things. And these two things are actually connected. Verse 10 reads in part like this, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Give diligence to make, number one, your calling, and number two, your election sure. Now, that word sure means to be stable, to be steadfast, to be firmly fixed, like you'd cement a a post in the ground. Believers are to make For themselves, they are to be personally active themselves to display that their salvation status is stable, is firmly fixed in Jesus Christ. The words calling and the word election are used here to describe believers. They're not only used here, they're used in a number of places in the New Testament. God calls all people, everybody, to be saved. But the calling here refers not, I believe, to our call to receive Christ. It refers to our call to be like Christ. God saves sinners to become something. God does not say to a sinner, come as you are, and then it's just okay to stay as you are. That's not at all what God does. Romans 8, 28 and 29 says, that we're called to God and we're called by God for a purpose. And that purpose is to be conformed to the image of Jesus. So this call here is to become like Jesus. And we are to be actively working towards that goal ourselves. And the curriculum for that goal is verses five, six, and seven. But now the word election, oh man, there's a term that is hotly debated, as you probably know. The word means chosen or selected, and it's debated among God's people about how people get selected to salvation. But here, the point of verse 10 is this, all genuine believers are elect people. That's a fact. We have the status of being chosen by God. Now, though, God obviously knows himself who he has selected, but the issue here is not about what God knows. It's about you and I knowing we are, having confidence that we are elected. As you and I work out our salvation, we will be assured of our true genuine status, and so will other people be assured that we're true believers. As we make our calling 
and our election sure are firmly fixed, then we will never fall, verse 10 says. That word fall refers to stumbling around. It refers to being in a state of doubting. I said I would use three words beginning with the letter C to deal with verses 10 and 11. The first word I used was the word comparison on Monday's broadcast. The second word I used it here today, it's the word classification. What classification of entrance will you and I have into the eternal kingdom when we go to be with Christ? Whether that happens by death prior to the rapture or happens at the rapture, we're going to see him. We shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. But now, I come to my final word beginning with the letter C. It is the word commitment. Commitment. You and I must now challenge ourselves about one issue. Will I, will you be committed to this diligence that we're called to here? Will you and I say, yes, I want to enter the kingdom with an abundant, a triumphal entrance? Will you and I lead 140,000 people to Christ? Maybe, maybe not. But the measuring of an abundant entrance is not about something that you and I can, can actually measure ourselves. We'll leave that in God's hands. But do I want to have a triumphant entrance, a celebrated entrance into heaven? To have that kind of entrance, we will have to do more than talk about it. We're going to have to do more than pray about it. We will have to commit our zeal, commit our energy, commit our diligent effort into adding to our faith virtue to virtue, knowledge, and so on. Wishing it to be so is not enough. Praying it to be so is not enough. You can pray about God meeting your needs, but go get a job. Be an active participant in that process. Has God ever met our needs for my wife Nancy and our family? Has he ever done it in a way that we were not personally involved? Yes, but that was the rarity. Most of the time we prayed, God, meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And God said, okay, here's a job. Now listen, friend, how committed are you and I right now to the process of being like Jesus. Are you, am I committed only on Sundays? Are you and I committed just to be like Jesus and committed to the process of diligence when we're inside the four walls of our church building? Or is it a daily commitment? The apostle Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That was a day-by-day thing for him. What do you and I need to personally do to take the next step in the commitment process to be like Jesus? If you're listening today, maybe the next step is the first step You must be born again. You must have a heavenly birth. You've had a physical birth. You're alive. But being born physically just means that you're going to have a physical body, but you have no entrance into heaven until you have a heavenly birth. You're born again by receiving Christ as your Savior. Do that now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, You can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.